Hi, in this tutorial I will show you how to use Fane for After Effects. Fane is a match moving plugin for Adobe After Effects made by Fatec. It combines camera tracking and digital content integration. It has a great tracking ability and I will show that in this tutorial by using handheld smartphone footage. I highly recommend this plugin because it is very powerful and easy to use. To follow this tutorial, you can download the free 14 day trial by clicking on the link in the description. So I already imported my footage and I'm going to drop it into a new composition. Then I'm going to apply the fan effect um, to the footage and I'm going to scroll uh, with the playhead so that I can see um, the entire wall and I'm going to click on add track so we have the mask region tracker and the rectangle region tracker and I'm going to use the rectangle region tracker to mark a part of this wall just like this okay and you can also adjust it after you're done by using um, these adjustment points on the corners of the placeholder. And then I'm going to select the area type. Um, the wall is not moving, so it's stationary. And I'm going to use static area. Um, if you're tracking a moving object, then you need to use dynamic area. After you're done adjusting this, just click on start and wait for the tracking to be complete. So the tracking is now complete and you can click on plane adjustment and this grid will show up. Now I'm going to activate the rotation tool and just slightly rotate the grid until it matches the wall. You can see that Fane has done a pretty good job tracking um, this footage. If I right click on the placeholder, um, you can see that you can use videos, photos, even text inserts with this um, new update. For this tutorial, I will use a picture of graffiti. I want my picture to keep its original aspect ratio, so I will click no. And as you can see, Fane has replaced the placeholder with the graffiti. The first problem that we have right now is this wall, so we need to get rid of it. I'm going to duplicate the footage and I'm going to put it on top and I guess we need to remove it all the way up to maybe two seconds. So I'm going to press Control shift d to split this layer and I'm going to delete the rest of it. Now I will select the rotor brush tool and double click on the footage. Um, I will select this wall like this and I will extend the roto brush span. Now I will click play and the roto brush will analyze the rest of the footage. Okay, so I will use the refine edge tool to make this look even better. I'm just going to draw on the edge and I'm going to analyze the footage once again. Okay, now we're done. And if I return to the composition, turn the visibility on again, we can see that the roto brush has done a pretty good job at removing this wall. The next and the final step is to make this graffiti blend in with the original footage. So we're going to need brightness and contrast. I'm going to apply that to the graffiti. I'm going to decrease the brightness and the contrast a bit. Then I'm going to need a saturation. I will decrease that a bit too. And then an important effect that we're going to apply is um, texturize so that the graffiti has uh, the texture of the brick wall that's underneath it. Uh, we're going to select this third layer to be the source. I'm going to slightly adjust the light source and the texture contrast 
I'm going to put that to 0.8, just decrease it a little bit. And as you can see, the texture of the brick wall is now visible. If I scroll the playhead towards the end, you can see this shadow. And as I continue walking, it's visible on the wall, but it's not visible on the graffiti. So that's the only thing that we need to fix. I'm going to duplicate the footage once again and I'm going to rename it to shadow. I'm going to duplicate the graffiti and I'm going to rename this to shadow mat. You can delete the hue and saturation, texturize and brightness and contrast. Place this layer underneath the shadow mat and set the track mat to alpha mat. And now we're going to desaturate this layer completely. So type in saturation, apply it to the shadow and just completely decrease the master saturation. Then you need to type in extract. It's in the keying folder, apply that to the shadow layer too. And now if you start decreasing the white point, you can see that the graffiti will start to appear again. And I'm just going to decrease it maybe to 55. I guess that's going to be okay. And now I'm going to increase the white softness. So you can see that my shadow and the shadow of the wall up here are now visible. The only thing that's left is to select the layer and press T and set the opacity to 25%. And as you can see, now the shadow is visible and that problem is fixed. That's it for this tutorial. You can check out the Fame plugin by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.